G'day, I'm John Nichols. This is Humans for Nature, the channel that brings you the interesting and the more serious side of global warming. This is my third video. Today I'm going to continue with the theme of electric bikes and, uh, and talk about their batteries. I will show you some of the beautiful places I visit uh, on the northern beaches of Sydney and why my e-bike is undoubtedly one of the most uh, joyous, interesting parts of my life um, and exercise. In the winter we don't heat the pool so I don't get any exercise out of that other than walking the dog. Now please subscribe and ring the bell below if you'd like to hear about when my next video is being uploaded and the next one will be two weeks time on a Wednesday um, and the subject uh, will be solar panels. I'm going to talk about my solar panels here and the trouble I have with um, uh, with shading and the way I get round it. So, um, but I do get round it and we should be fine uh, and you should be fine if you're going to take them on with some shade. Now let's start with e-bikes and their batteries. Now this is the, um, the original uh, 9 or 10 amp power battery that came out of the uh, Lightner and it's boldly written across the front um, but I didn't find this. I was a bit worried about it because the hills around here I was getting 27 maybe lucky to get 30 kilometers out of it so I bought this one. Now this one um, is uh, this is 19 amp hours exactly the same size but it's 19 amp hours um, now I was told when I went to buy this it was a lot cheaper if you bought this after the event if you bought it when you ordered the bike it only cost $250 to go up to a 16 amp hour battery but um, I didn't do that which was a mistake so the option later that when you buy it later it's seven hundred and ten dollars but this one was half that price but it's 19 amp hours and i understand from my research it's a good quality one and i'm pretty happy with it so um but the different the trouble is if you if you buy this one there are some things it doesn't quite fit it's not far off it there are little things you have to alter. For instance, the polarity is wrong, which is a major one, but it's not that difficult to uh, turn the polarity around. You take the bottom off and you can do it without using a soldering iron. But there are some bits of filing and scraping you have to do. Um, but uh, this is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so far I've been very happy with this, and I suppose at some stage I'll try and sell this one. That's what, that's, that's a now I'm going to uh, take you on one of the circuits I do from here. Um, it's about 20 k's. I leave here in Newport, head up towards Bilgola, um, and then uh, out towards Avalon and Clareville, and part of the way to Palm Beach, and then back. So it's about uh, 20 k's all round, and I do about three different circuits around this area. Um, and I find it great. I leave from the house, I don't need to go in the car at all, I just go straight from here and come back. So 20 k's, I hope you enjoy it. This is Taylor's Point Wharf and uh, it's where I like to stop quite regularly and you can see I'm coming around here to pit water you can see the end of the wharf and down the end there you can see Lion Island and beyond there is uh, Woi Woi where I built my first big aluminium catamaran. There are beautiful homes along the waterfront here at uh, Clareville and uh, it's a really lovely place. I like to, uh, as usual, find a seat where I can sit and have a little rest and enjoy the view and I really enjoy Clareville. It's a beautiful, quite exclusive place and uh, but you can come along here quite easily. It's a public, uh, it's a public area and and as we head round here you can see we're heading up 
back again towards Lion Island, where beyond there in Woi Woi, the first boat was built. But the second one was built in Brisbane, and that was much later when Jan and I were able to raise the finance um, to build it, have it built professionally. It was a 100-footer and cost quite a lot of money. And uh, But we had to raise the money, and later on we we had two more large aluminium cats built. This is one of my very favourite spots along this pit water side of the coast. It's Paradise Beach. And this is a point here where there's a few houses on the end, they've got their own private drive. I always think um, I love where I live, but if there's one other place I could live, it would be along here. But you'd, uh, it would take uh, a few bob to buy one of these, that's for sure. But there's, this is leading out towards Pitwater now. But the great thing here is got the, they've got their own swimming pool. And there's only six parking spots here for the public, so uh, that means it must be pretty exclusive. Now we come to the serious part. But before we start, I'd like to ask you to subscribe and, and make comments and ask me questions below. Um, but let me tell you that if you abuse me or you ask me stupid questions, you're extremely unlikely to hear from me. Right, now, I'm often told by friends and others they believe even if you have an electric car, it still has to be charged with power coming from a coal-fired power station. That's not strictly true. Even now, Australia is, this year, 2020, is generating about 21% of its power through renewables. And nobody expects it to happen overnight. It can't make it happen overnight. But there are several states within Australia who believe they will be in 100% renewables by 2030. Now, I hear around the traps that there are people saying we should be aiming for 200%. And then the other, well, a couple of months ago now, I was listening, I was what, listening to a podcast um, with the Energy Insiders, with Giles Parkinson and his offsider, David Leach, and they were interviewing Darren Miller from Marina. And he made the statement that if we really want to get anywhere, we should be aiming for something like 700% renewables. And that excited me. Just the thought that we could possibly do that. And, and experts are saying we can then 700 we should aim for that. But do you want to know, do you know what that means? That means that if we get anywhere near that, we will start to be able to make our, our own steel plants. We will be able to smelt aluminium from renewables. I think it's all very possible. I hope you uh, will be able to join me in two weeks time and of course it'll be on a Wednesday and until then I'd just like to say g'day and goodbye.